you guys doing today? You glad you're here? Amen. Yes, youth, you're free to go. If you're in the youth, remain in the sanctuary. You can head up to the to your meeting area. Well, welcome to Restoration Church. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. You know, it's been an amazing service already, and, and, and everything has really been pointing to this word today. So I want you to just really open your hearts and, and listen intently, not just with your, with your natural ears, but hear with the spirit. Hear with your spirit. Open up your heart. And let this word find place in your heart. And let it grow and expand and, and, and do what God wants us to do. So thank you so much for being here. If you want to, if you will, turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. You can turn in your Bible. You can follow along with me. It'll be on the wall behind me. Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10 from uh, Genesis 12. Then we're going to skip down to chapter 13, read verses 1 through 4, and then verse 18 from Genesis chapter 13. And I'm reading today from the New King James. And it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. Go to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree, the Moray, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there Abram built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still towards the south. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. Chapter 13. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had. And Lot went with him, and he went to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Verse 18, then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terrible trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. We do some women. Will you stand this morning as I pray? I feel like we need to just kind of shake a few things off. And sometimes standing and stretching a little bit. Maybe standing to make you focus a little bit more, a little bit more intently. As I pray, would you pray with me? Father, we bless you in this house. This is the house of the living God. This is a place where we come, God, to, to pray to you, to worship you, to, to give our lives unto you, Father. And I pray that today, God, is truly a day of consecration for all of us, that you speak to our hearts, God, cause us to consecrate ourselves to you afresh and anew. I pray for the people that are in this room, God. I pray for those that are watching online. I ask you to speak, Holy Spirit, now to each and every one of us. Open up the heavens over this place. Let your glory fill this house. Let your voice be heard loud and clear. Speak, Holy Spirit, to each one of us, I pray. We want to hear from heaven. 
Help us now, God, to connect with you individually and corporately. That there be a sense of oneness and unity in this room. No distractions, God. No wandering minds. No worries, no concerns in this time, in this place. But a total focus and concentration on you. For you are the living God. You're the one whom we serve. You're the one whom we worship. And you're the one who holds our very lives in your hands. So Lord, we stand in your presence today and we say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Lift up Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be exalted in this house, Lord. And let every person under the sound of my voice be transformed by the words of the living God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, today I'm going to speak to you on the importance of prayer, worship, and sacrifices in the life of a believer or the life of a Christian in a message entitled, Build Him an Altar. Build Him. Build God. Build Jesus an altar. You know, altars in the Old Testament were structures on which offerings or sacrifices were made. Altars were usually raised platforms that had a flat surface. And there were over 400 references to altars found throughout the Bible, which lets us know just how important God sees altars in our life. Altars represent a place of consecration. An altar were, were, were often built in to, to commemorate an encounter that someone had with God, a, a profound encounter that had a profound impact on someone who had had an encounter with God. In a much broader sense, an altar is a designated place where a person consecrates himself to someone or to something. And many churches, many church buildings have altars for prayer. Some churches have altars for communion. There's altars for weddings. There's altars for other sacred purposes that churches have established throughout the, throughout the country and throughout the world. Some Christians, some believers, and should I say all believers, to create their own personal altar. A place for personal worship. Something that is a visible reminder of who we are in Christ. And a visible reminder of God's word that tells us to present ourselves to him as a living sacrifice. Every human heart, your heart, my heart, has an invisible altar where we can consecrate our lives to God. And when we surrender any area of our life over to the control of the Holy Spirit, we're in effect laying that area on the altar of God. So you don't have to wait till you come into the church to come into this altar to lay, lay, lay your life before the Lord. You can build and you should build altars in every area of your life, every place of your existence. You should have an altar erected. Sometimes that's surrendering. Sometimes when we come in and, 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 and lay, 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 lay our lives before the Lord, we, we give the Holy Spirit control of our lives. Sometimes that surrendering can be difficult for us to carry out, right? Think about Abraham. When God told him to place his son Isaac on the altar of sacrifice, can you imagine how difficult that must have been for Abraham? That was personal to him. Very personal to him. Because Abraham knew that Isaac was a son of promise. 
He knew he was the son through whom God told him, look up into the sky, Abraham, and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. Yet what did Abraham do when God said, sacrifice your son? What did he do? He obeyed. He did it. It was no doubt a hard thing to do, but he obeyed. However difficult it was, Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac because the Lord told him to do so. Why was he able to do that? One reason is before Abraham erected the, the physical altar or the first physical altar that he built unto God, he had built an altar in his heart unto him. He had committed, decided that he was going to obey God. But that took an internal working on his part. So I ask you this morning, have you erected an altar in your heart to honor God upon? And what might your Isaac be that God is telling you to put on that altar? Will you obey him as Abraham did or will you not? You see, church, you can lay any area of your, of your being on the altar of the Lord and trust him with the results just like Abraham did. You can lay it on the altar and let go and let God. And you don't need a physical altar, but surrender it unto the Lord on the altar of your heart. When Abraham, or when Abram, as he was known before God changed the name to Abraham. When Abram traveled through the land of Shechem and came to the oak of Moray, the Lord appeared to him and he built an altar there. When he left that place and set up camp between Bethel and Ai, he built an altar of the Lord there. When he moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which, which, is, which is in Hebron, Abram built an altar to the Lord there. We see this pattern in Abraham's life that whenever he settled in a new place, what did he do? He built an altar. He built an altar. And Abraham built these altars for three primary reasons. There will be maybe one reason. I'm going to give you three primary reasons why I believe Abram Abraham built these altars. One, he built altars for prayer, for worship, and for sacrifices to God. So what is your, your altar that you build should be what? An altar of prayer, an altar of worship, and an altar of sacrifice unto the Lord. Number two, he built altars to serve as reminders of God's promise to bless him. Your altar should be an altar that you use to remind you of the promises God has made over your life. And number three, he built altars to claim those areas or those regions for God. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Abraham knew he could not survive spiritually in those lands that God led him to among the people of the land without regularly renewing his love and his loyalty to God. Amen. He knew it. Amen. Something we seem to have forgotten to do with the regularity of Abraham. We get caught up in the business of life and we just get to doing things and doing life and we get so good at doing things that we, forgot, we forget to invite God into the very things that we're doing. 
We become expert, even expert Christians. But you cannot be an expert in your walk with God if you're not in, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in that walk. Doesn't matter how smart you are, how good you are, how pretty you are, none of that matters. We need to regularly invite God into those spaces and renew our love and our loyalty to Him. But instead of building altars of prayer, worship, and sacrifice to God, we often build altars to serve our own needs or our own wants. Now listen, we all have things that we need. We all have things that we want. We all have things that we desire. And please don't hear me to say that's bad. We all have those things. We all have desires and preferences. But what we need to learn to do, church, we need to learn how to alter our preferences by putting them on the altar of God. Alter. A-L-T-E-R, your preferences, by putting them on the A-L-T-O-A-R of God. Alter your preferences by putting them on God's altar. Abraham built altars to signify his dependence on God because of the people that were in the land. When he came to Canaan, the Bible says the Canaanites were in the land. When him and his household traveled down to Egypt to, to get away from the famine that was in the land, Abraham said the Egyptians in this land are wicked people. And they're going to kill me for my beautiful wife. When Abram and Lot separated their camps, Lot choosing to set up camp in the region of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. You got to get this. The regions in which Abram entered had people who were wicked, people who were sinful, people who worshiped and served other gods. Their ways were not pleasing unto the Lord, yet those were the regions that God led Abraham into. We want it easy. We want it too easy. Because you got to realize, church, Abraham's situation then was not, was not different or unique to our situation today. The nations of the world we live in have exceedingly wicked and evil people who practice things that are not pleasing unto the Lord. It seems everything around us is intended to taint us, to draw us away from God and his love and his word. That's, that is, that's what I call exceedingly wicked and evil. Yet many Christians do not want to deal with the wicked forces that are greatly influencing the, the behavior of men. We do not want to do combat over our families. We do not want to fight for the sanctity of our homes. We do not pray over our communities. We do not want to do combat over our nation to push back the evil that's being perpetrated. Abraham lived among sinful, wicked people who worshiped and served false gods. Therefore, everywhere he went, he built an altar. Why? Because he understood the spiritual warfare he was in. He knew the people around him were evil, but he also knew they were being influenced by spirits of evil. And Abraham wanted to remove any right those spirits of darkness had over the areas in which he settled in. Let me say that again. He wanted to remove 
any right that those spirits of darkness had over the regions in which he lived. The people of the land had their gods that they worshipped. And they had altars erected for those gods. So what did Abraham do? He used the same strategy by erecting altars himself. But he built altars for God Almighty. He built altars to the Almighty God. Genesis 17 tells us when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram, but instead you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. That is the God that Abraham built altars for. And every time, church, he built an altar, he was taking territory for that God. Every time. Territory. That the people in the land had dedicated to demon powers. And when he built an altar, he was claiming that land for the kingdom of the living God. Please hear me. Spiritual beings cannot inhabit the earth or regions on it and control its atmosphere without the people of the land giving them permission to do so. By building altars to Yahweh, Abraham was canceling the permission that other people had given to Satan. You got to realize, we live in a land, we live in a world, we live amongst a people who's given Satan permission yeah. to rule and reign in the regions that we live in. Come on now. We got to build altars to the living God and take those regions back. Satan ain't going to, listen, he's not just going to give it up to you because he's a nice guy. Ain't nothing nice about him. He's not going to give it up because you're crying or you're, or you're hurting or you're, or you're sad. Listen, he wants you crying. He wants you hurting. He wants you sad. You got to take back what Jesus has already bought for you. Build an altar unto him. Build an altar unto God and pull down those evil forces. The one to live in the regions that God's given you control over. Have you allowed evil beings to control the atmospheres that you are responsible for? Have you intentionally or unintentionally made covet covenants with power of the darkness? Have you built altars unto evil or altars unto God's kingdom? As we go through the length and breadth of the territories God has given us, we need to learn how to set up altars in those places and call on the name of the Lord. That's what Abraham did. Whenever he, whenever he, wherever he went, he set up an altar and he called on the name of God. And one of the effects of raising a prayer altar to God is it brings down his presence. Yeah. It causes the abiding presence of God to become the manifested presence of God. Human altars, human altars, altars that we erect gives God, I'm talking God Jehovah, Yahweh God, 
the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the altar that we erect, give that God. Listen to me now. You, you got to get this. Give that God legal ground to work in the land. We know we own everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But you got to give them legal ground. You got to give them legal ground to work in your land. That is why God said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. You want the land to be healed? Build an altar unto the Lord. When you set up an altar, a prayer altar to Yahweh, you're saying to him, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. Let it be done here in my life, in my family, in my church, in my community, on my job. Build him an altar, an altar of prayer, an altar of worship, an altar of sacrifice. Build it in your heart. And watch God's kingdom come into your world. Genesis 22 says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offering. Listen to what God told Abraham to do. <laughs> offer your son as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning. He didn't know where he was going. He said, God said, go where I will tell you. Early in the morning, sell his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, the third day, what day was it? We're talking three days journey. The third day. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, listen to what he said now. What did God tell him to do? Offer up your boy. Offer up your boy. But listen to what Abraham said to the young men. He said, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will, will go yonder and worship. And what? He didn't say, I'm going to come back. He said, we will come back. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on, the, on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. What was he going to do? He was going to sacrifice his son. And the two of them went together. Then Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. <laughs> my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Look, the fire, the wood. But where is, where is what? Where is what? Not a lamb. Where is the lamb? For a burnt offering. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb. Not a lamb. But the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them. Went together. 
Then they came to the place in which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there. He built an altar to sacrifice his son on. And he placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son. And he laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand. And he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son. Listen, there are things that we have in our lives in multiplicities. But in, even in that, there may be only one that God recognizes. Listen, Isaac was not the only son of Abraham. He had Ishmael. But what did God call Isaac? He said, he is your only son. Because he's the one that God promised. You see, Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, they made Ishmael. (laughs) They made Ishmael. God gave him Isaac. And God said, this is your only son. I want you to sacrifice him on the altar. Mm, mm, mm. That a priest, man. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And there behind him was Now, I kind of, kind of scratched my head over this just a little bit, Emmanuel. Okay? Just a little bit. It wasn't the lamb. It was not a lamb. It was a ram. Caught in a thicket by his horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide us, Jehovah Jireh. Miss Jackie, Jehovah Jireh. As it said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Four things I want to point out about this passage of Scripture. The first is this. The place of offering was three days' journey. That means Abraham had a long time to think about what he was about to do. Sometimes we want God to just, God, just, just, just get it over. Just let it be done with now. But that may not be the journey he's called us on, Jason. He had to travel three days knowing that God told him when you get there, you're going to sacrifice your son. He had a long time to think about that. I wonder how he slept at night. I wonder what he thought when he looked at Isaac. Yet he continued down the path of obedience. And God did not put Abraham through this test to trip him up or to watch him fall. But he put him through this test to deepen his capacity to obey him and to continue to develop his character. Just as fire refines oil to extract 
precious metals, God refines us through difficult yeah. circumstances. When we're tested, we can complain about it, or we can try to see how God is stretching us to further develop his character in us. That day, that morning, Abraham got up and began one of the greatest acts of obedience in recorded history traveling three days and some 50 miles to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son. Over the years, through many difficult lessons, Abraham learned the importance of obeying God. So this time, his obedience was prompt and it was complete. Obeying God can be a struggle because it may mean giving up something we truly want. So please hear me when I say this. Do not always expect your acts of obedience to God to be easy or to be something that's going to come naturally. Because it may not be easy and it may not feel natural. But it may be something that God is calling you to do. The second thing I want to point out is the statement of faith that Abraham made. He said to the young men that were with him, stay here with the donkey and the lad and I will go yonder and worship God and we will come back. Now, listen to this scripture. I want you to see the, put you in the frame of mind that Abraham was in. Are you listening? Are you ready? Listen to this. Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Listen, what did Abraham do? He reasoned that if Isaac died, that if he carried out the sacrifice, he reasoned that God was able to bring him back to life again. So in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead because of Abraham, he was good as dead. Abraham, Kimberly, believed in the resurrection. I don't know where he got that belief from. Before he listened, where did he get that from? I don't know if he, I, don't know if, I never remember he saw anyone resurrected from the dead. But he believed in the resurrection. Therefore, he was willing to obey God. Listen, sometimes we feel like when God tells us to lay something down, it's dead forever. Not real now, he wants us to lay it down so he can raise it up and give it back to us better than what it was when we laid it down. You got to believe, you got to trust, you got to obey. The third thing I want to point out is the conversation between Abraham and Isaac. Isaac said to his father, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Not a lamb, but the lamb. Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. And it's not coincidental that Abraham said God would provide the lamb. The lamb. Listen to me. He said God can provide the lamb for the sacrifice. But what did God provide? He provided the ram. You see, both Abraham and Isaac prophesied the coming of Jesus. They knew it wasn't about that lamb and that, that ram and that thicket, but they knew it was about the lamb whom God was going to send, his only son. They prophesied the coming of Jesus. So know the parallel between the ram offered as a substitute for Isaac and Jesus offered as a substitute for us. 
God stopped Abraham from sacrificing his son. But God didn't spare his own. He didn't spare his own. Because if Jesus had lived, church, we would still be dead. God sent his only son to die for us so that we can be spared from the faith of eternal death. The eternal death that we deserve. Instead of eternal death, God through his son Jesus has given us eternal life. The fourth and final thing I want to point out about this scripture is this. And I want to do so in the form of a question to you. Because I want you to talk to me. Why did Abraham, and listen, there's no right or wrong answers, okay? I want to tell you that first. So don't feel like you're going to say the wrong thing. Why did Abraham so willingly and quickly build an altar to sacrifice Isaac on? Hmm? He believed. Why? Hmm? He trusts. He had trust in God. These good answers, right answers. He had communed with God. Huh? He loved God. Speak it out. Faith. He had faith in God. Come on. He had a relationship with God. He had experience with God. He had an obedient heart. It was a practice of his. Listen, he had made a habit of building altars. Everywhere he went, he built an altar. So when God told him, build an altar to offer your son upon, Building altars was nothing new. He'd done it time and time and time again. Because Abraham was an altar builder. Build him an altar. He knew God was trustworthy. Build him an altar. Building altars or building that altar for Isaac was easy because building altars was what Abraham did. You see, church, the more altars you build, the easier they are to build. Regardless of why, you're building them. Let me say that again. The more altars you build unto God, the easier they are to build, regardless of why you're building them. Where might God want you to build an altar of prayer, an altar of worship, or an altar of sacrifice to him. How about your home? It's sad to say, but we let all kinds of evil spirits into our homes, knowingly and unknowingly. So we need to build an altar unto God at home to take that land back. How about on your job? What prayers do you offer up at work and for work and for the people you work for, work with? Do your co-workers even know that you worshiped, that you worship the living God? What sacrifices do God want you to make on your job that may save a co-worker? What sacrifices he may use to transform a co-worker? How about in your neighborhood? 
How about in the church? When you come in this place of worship, do you build an altar in your heart for God here? Or do you just come in, walk through those doors, find your seat, and just go through the motion? Let's learn, church, to build him altars in every area that God has given us responsibility for. You should have an altar erected unto the Lord. Demons ain't going to leave because you don't want them there. They're going to leave when you build an altar to God and you, you command them to go. And you, you build something and invite God's prayer. That's, gonna, that's what's going to get them out. Yeah. Let's stop fooling ourselves. Yeah. Let's stop playing games. Yeah. Let's stop just going through the motion, church. Let's get serious about this because guess what? Satan is serious. He's serious about destroying your life. He's serious about killing you. He's serious about seeing you go to hell. Yeah. Let's determine today that we're going to fight back. You need to determine that you're going to fight back. Jesus has purchased for you the right to rule, to reign. To create a spiritual atmosphere in every part of your life. But you got to do what Abraham did. You got to build him altars. And listen, please hear me. Some of you in this room need to learn right now how to build an altar unto the Lord while there's not much pressure on you. Because when the time comes and there's pressure, you're not going to know how to do it. Learn it now. Learn it now. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Lord, I thank you for this people. I thank you for your, your church. I thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord God, that we can look at the life of Abraham and we can see patterns that we need to, we need to make part of our own life. Patterns of building altars of prayer, worship, and sacrifices unto you. Patterns of obedience, Lord God. Patterns of being uh, I'm more concerned about, about following you and serving you than serving ourselves or anyone else. So, Lord, I pray over this people this morning, those that are in this room and those that are watching online, I pray, Lord God, that we would make a commitment to build altars unto you wherever we are. Would you just take a moment and just talk to God? He's going to show you where he wants you to build an altar. He's going to show you. Talk to him right now. Listen to him. <laughs> Say, God, show me. Where am I to build an altar, God? Speak, Holy Spirit. Speak, Holy Spirit. Speak. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, just begin to invite him into your space, right where you are. Just say, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, come. Lord, find your way into my heart. Find your way into my world. I give you permission, God. I build an altar right here, right now. And on this altar, God, I invite you to come. Come and be enthroned, Lord Jesus. Come and have your seat, Lord Jesus. Come and take your rightful place, Lord Jesus. I build you an altar right now.
I thank you for this people. Thank you for this church. I pray, God, that each one of us have heard from you today. That we walk out of this place with a sense of commitment, with a knowledge and an understanding that we need to build altars for you, God. Even when we're in our car, driving to work, build an altar. When you're out walking through the neighborhood, build an altar. When you sit down at the dinner table, build an altar. Build an altar, invite God into this space. He will come. He will show up. He will take reign over your life. In Jesus' name.